All right, everybody, good morning. Um, we have a very exciting webinar for you today. Uh, we partnered with Shore. Um, so Shore is doing some really amazing things. And I will go over a few housekeeping things and a few slides to start it off. For anyone that doesn't know, Doble was started in 1971 um, and is still owned by the same owner. Um, and it is still private and we, we are doing well. So uh, we started out doing live events um, years and years ago. And every time we did something, everybody asked if we could do one more thing, one more thing. And eventually, uh, you know, we got into some more control, some different technologies and just keep saying yes. Um, and I think that's what helps keeps us relevant and uh, moving forward. So um, if you have any questions about Doble and the history, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask. Um, so here are a few, some of the services that we offer in no particular order. And, um, you know, these, the, they aren't limited to just what you see on the screen here. So obviously, um, you know, my, my focus is on the audio visual integrated system side of things. Um, that's where I, I spend the most of my time. We do have a, an event production side that does do live events still. Um, obviously that's a little bit of a, a hurt right now. Um, but if you or anybody, you know, uh, is looking for rental gear or needs assistance doing, um, some setups and live events, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and we do fire security systems. Um, so, um, if you're looking for a one-stop shop and you just need somebody to take care of all your needs, we, we are the, the go-to guys. So we obviously cover some digital signage and digital signage is a very broad statement because it means something different to everybody. Um, but if you're looking for some digital signage solutions or just something very basic, um, we can cover that as well. Um, and then finally, here is our contact info. Uh, please don't hesitate to take a screenshot of that and reach out to any one of us um, if you have anything that you want to ask or if you just don't want to talk about it today and you just want to have a, a further conversation. Um, that's it. So I'm going to kick it over actually to Andy Kerr. Um, Andy is from McFadden and Andy can introduce him, himself and his team and we'll go from there. Let me stop sharing. All right. All right. So I'm Andy Kerr. I'm, I'm with McFadden Sales. Uh, I'm one of the principals at McFadden Sales. We're located here in, in central Ohio and I'm kind of in our test kitchen, which is our office conference room. And we kind of have a mishmash of gear here uh, that, that we'll, we'll be able to show you. Um, I've been in and out of the industry for around 20 years now total. Um, so uh, I just, I started working with McFadden and Doble around 10 years ago and I am I'm glad we get to do this uh, for you all. Joining me from, from the McFadden team is uh, our market development uh, team member on the, on, on the system side of things, and that's Tony Barbuto. And you probably, several of you have met Tony at, over, over the last few years. Uh, he's, he's an awesome technical resource. Uh, his focus is to help Doble with, with all of you and, and help solve some of your issues. And uh, so, so that's about McFadden. Uh, joining us from Sure is, uh, the, I guess, Tony's counterpart in the market development and the uh, kind of the, the middle part of the United States here is Scott Ramsayer. And he is uh, technical expertise and extraordinary mustache and everything there is to know about sure. Um, and so what we'd like to do, I think, uh, is show you some stuff, but really kind of talk what the challenges, talk about what the challenges have been for you uh, throughout this, this summer and during this 2020 bit of weird stuff that's been going on as we've had to work from home and then go back and forth and then you know, I know some of you are, are with universities, had to set up hybrid learning environments and, and get that going. So we, we love participation because, because we have a whole array of things to show you, but uh, you know, we, we kind of like to cater it towards what are your biggest problems? What are your biggest challenges? Where, where have you needed the most help in the audio side as, as you're setting up distance learning or, or work from home environments or anything else that we haven't thought of? Um, going forward. So Scott, maybe you can kick us off with some stuff here and then uh, we can show you some products and just move from there. Feel free. I think, are we doing the unmute or, or mute or yeah. we, are we entering I, it into the chat? How are we doing that? 
I saw a hand raise and then it went down pretty quickly. So um, <laughs> I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to unmute who, whoever that was. Um, but if you do have a question, you can enter it through the Q and A on the bottom of your toolbar or raise your hand and I can unmute you. Um, you know, we were talking through this before. I mean, some of the questions may be a little more in depth and may be better solved with uh, verbal communication instead of a written uh, question. So uh um let's just have, let's let's just see where it goes so yeah um yeah. hi everybody so glad you could be here um yeah i'm up for people just asking questions and this is meant to be a round table like even right off the bat here i i, I don't have an agenda of anything i want to cover today um sure has introduced a bunch of new products this past year but i'd, I'd like to think most of you are aware of that if not i'm sure they'll pop up if necessary maybe none of these new products matter right now but i'd like to think that maybe some of them do um, so I wouldn't mind starting with whoever thought they had a question. Let's, let's, let's hear it. What, uh, what's on your guys' mind? What, um, what are your biggest concerns right now? Or, um, heck if we can even share any accomplishments and, and share that amongst each other, I think that would be great. Um, so was there somebody who had a question? No, if not, uh, I, I have a, I have a, I have a thought here and uh, something that that I know that we've, we've all been dealing with, you know, Doble and Sure and McFadden is, is helping uh, folks get ready for distance learning um, or hybrid learning environments or whatever. And, and there's been some unique instances uh, throughout the country that we can point to. One that I found really interesting uh, has been setting up kind of a, a voiceless system using one of the Sure microphones, uh, but but also uh, it's it's being used for the far side audio for folks to hear at the same time. So, no no lapels, no wireless necessarily. It's just a, a, a 710 microphone array on a podium that's being used as voice lift um, in in the actual room for the 50 percent or whatever percentage of the students are able to be there, and then. It's also being used for the audio for the folks that have to be at home learning uh, in that environment. So I think Scott, you have an example of that, uh, or at least a picture of that, right? To talk about how that was set up and, and done. Um, again, so, so some voice lift in the room at the same time as uh, conferencing at the same time. Um, well, is that something, is that what we're interested in? Do you guys want to hear the nuts and bolts, or do we maybe we can just talk about what are the concerns of doing that? Like, why is that even a big deal? Um, so, what I want to start off with is what 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 the consideration is is if your voice is being amplified in the room. So, if you've got um, Andy, I'm sorry, what was your example that the, the instructor does have a lav or does not? Does not. No, okay. no wireless. It's it's just an array microphone. Um, uh, in this case, it was the MXA 710 two foot version mounted to the, directly to the podium. And as the, as the professor walked around, aimed towards the professor, as the professor walked around the room, it, it picked uh, him or her up each, for each class. And there was voice lift in the room. So there was audio reinforcement in the room. And then, uh, but also that was being ported to uh, whatever conferencing system there, yeah, there it is. Uh, whatever conferencing system they're using to be able to show uh, to the to the far side those are that are learning virtually. Okay, well, I just shown a picture here so you guys can. It, I know it's a little hard to see, but this is a microphone. If you're not familiar with our 710 linear array microphone, this is the two foot version. There's your camera. And there's the lectern. So uh, that's the scenario that we're talking about here. Um, so to me, the the, the concern would be that if, if uh, one, how much voice lift can you get from a microphone? And, and we can talk about that. But the other one is, so if, if the instructor's voice is coming through the room, but we have microphones aimed at the room for the participants, aren't those microphones gonna pick up the instructor on top of this mic picking up the instructor? And doesn't that just sound bad? And so that to me is, is the consideration. And the solution to that, by the way, is just, uh, is the same solution you would have for when the far end of your conference is coming into the room. You don't want the far end coming into your microphones. So you use echo cancellation, AEC. Um, so to do that for, in other words, treat the instructor just as if 
the instructor was the far end of a call. Um, and to cancel the instructor out of the room mics, uh, I'm calling them the room mics, you know, the mics picking up Q&A, let's call it. Uh, you just would need to add that instructor to the AEC reference. And now, just like you do on the far end, that's what usually the AEC reference is, is the far end. Uh, now when the instructor talks, only that, the, I'm showing you the 710 there, only that mic aimed at the instructor is being sent to the far end, not the, the Q&A mics accidentally picking up the instructor in the room. So that's the consideration there. And, and, and uh, we can maybe get into how, how you would actually set that up. Um, but I want to show you uh, kind of what, because this is a new product, the 710, how this makes for a really good lectern mic. Um, even though we think of this mic as being aimed forward, right? Uh, this, this can pick up anywhere around the microphone at all, um, including off the ends of the microphone. So uh, as Annie was talking about, if the instructor walks, you know, left to right from the lectern, um, this will still pick that um, instructor up. And that's what makes this even better than a lectern mic. Because uh, it's sort of common knowledge to think of, hey, let's get the person as close to the mic as possible. Let's stick a gooseneck mic right in front of them. But I think, as you guys all know from the real world, first of all, the dynamics can just change a bunch. If you're on axis or you just move five inches to the right, your level drops a whole bunch, let alone if you were to walk off to the side. Um, so that's what's kind of cool about this new, to me, this new idea of a lectern mic is, being able to cover the whole front of the room with this microphone. Um, and so that's it. Um, yeah, and it will get, I mean, it will, it will get almost to 180 degrees of the, of the front of that mic, right? I mean, it is, it is a pretty wide pickup pattern. Correct. Um, hey guys, we, we have our first question. I know, yeah. I saw the first question. <laughs> it didn't take Bob long. Lead times yeah. on 710s and 310s. <laughs> um, I, I, 710s are in stock. They are in stock. 310s are currently not in stock. I am checking on lead time. I will have an answer within, I hope, uh, middle of next month is when 310s will be available. So, cool. so a couple weeks from now. All right, so we just kind of came up with one scenario. Um, is there anyone who's got uh, another scenario they want to discuss? Or again, how are you guys handling the new normal? Anyone? All right, again, I really do encourage you guys to like, to, let's talk about what you guys wanna talk about. Um, but I will follow up um, talking about the 710. Um, I, I'm gonna, and I've rarely even done this. So you guys, this will be a special treat. I'm gonna give you guys uh, an, an interesting idea of using the 710 uh, in a slightly different way uh, to pick up, let's say an instructor in the room, as well as pick up, um, the participants in the room. Um, I don't see this happening much, but again, it just kind of shows you how the 710 is a, is a new tool that we can use. So I'm going to uh, find a video for you really quickly here. Um, and we're gonna listen to an actual test that I made at our customer experience center um, here in Chicago. Um, I snuck in, uh, you'll see, let me share my screen. All right. I'm assuming you guys are just looking at a picture here of a mic at an angle. Yes. Yep. yes. Um, so again, I don't know how if this is going to happen, but this idea that you can aim um, a lobe, as we call it at Sure, off the end of a microphone could be used to pick up um, the front of the room here, as well as the rest of the mic picking up participants. And I'm just going to play this video and see if this strikes up, you know, please, if there's any questions or it just gives you an idea, um, as well as it shows you uh, again, the pickup pattern um, of this microphone. You know what? I'm not sure I shared audio. Give me, let me just share this really quickly again. Yep, got it. This is a demo of the MXA 710 linear array mic, the two foot version. And I have it angled in the scene ceiling like this. So the mic is directly aimed right at me. Let me share the designer's screen with you. Sorry for the delay. 
in my voice for when you hear yourself in the headphones. That's what happens. So we're on a wide lobe right now. And I have aim the mic forward. Autofocus is still adjusting 10 degrees. I'm going to walk around the room. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now I'm in the corner. Corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Directly to the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then far corner. One, two, three, four, five. Six, I'm gonna pause the video there. It's it's intentionally supposed to show you that it it's not picking up my voice in the back of the room. We're just aiming one lobe off the front of the microphone just to show you the pickup pattern um, of the room here. And then directly behind the microphone. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Coming up close to it. Head over to the side. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now I'm back to the front of the room at the lectern. Let's change this to medium. All right, uh, I'm gonna stop the video there because um, we have some other questions coming in. Uh, just to give you a test uh, or give you a sample too of, um, uh, of I've, I've got a bunch of um, demos if that helps us today um, that I've done in that room of the, of the microphone mounted in different ways, picking up different scenarios. But, um, Connor, you want to help us out with the next question? Yes, the next question is using a 310 on the lectern behind acrylic shield and the 710s above students, 310 feeds PC and room speakers, 710s feed PC for Zoom. Um, I don't know. Sounds uh, good. Bob, that sounds like a statement. That, yeah, yeah. That, that, <laughs> that's uh, using a 310 on a lectern is, is pretty common uh, lately. It uh, seems to be. Uh, a very common thing to do because because you can get pretty directional again with a 310 there's quite a few adjustments um on that 310 to be able to do that and then uh 710 above the students is perfect that picks it's got a great big pickup pattern to be able to do that so excellent the, the thing i like about bob's idea there is when this is all done, you've, you've got some nice microphones that you could potentially repurpose and in, in use in different scenarios. So I like that idea a lot of using the 310 behind a shield now, because after that shield can come down, you may not need that 310 there at all. You might be able to pick that up from the 710 as well. All right. I'm just going to quickly jump in for those. I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to assume that everyone knows what a 310 and everything is. Maybe you do, and that would be great. But there's the 310. That is our table array microphone. Before we were talking about our 710, the linear array microphone, um, the 910 is our ceiling array microphone. And if uh, you all weren't aware, I hope you are, we now have a Dante speaker. We also, ha also have a network mute button. Okay. And all of these things, all of those things on that screen are in our office here. So we can also show, you know, real time live audio demo over Zoom here if you, if you, want, to, if you want to hear that at some point, so. All right. next question. Um, so question about mounting the 710 in the ceiling um, to pick up both uh, teacher and students. Um, so there are multiple mount ways to mount this and I, you know, I'll let you guys pick Scott or uh, Sure. Andy. Um, I'm gonna show, uh, let me share my screen again. Uh, I won't play the video unless um, we need to, but in this video, I know I've got, so this is the same thing. And I just want to show you what it looks like when, right there. So here's where the 710, at least, and again, now the 710 is going to have some parameters. Where are you mounting it? Because you can mount it on a wall, ceiling, even a table. Um, and then which orientation? So I've got this uh, parallel to the outside walls, you know, perpendicular to the front wall. Uh, again, in my, my pretend scenario here, this end lobe is picking up the instructor. And then lobes one and two here are picking up students in the class. So I think that's what the question was. Um, and I think that would work great. Um, was there more now, of a question to that? Sky, I want to make sure I'm looking at that right. Is that, which way is that 710 mounted? Is it, is it mounted 
Uh, okay, so it's mounted perpendicular to the student rows there, right? So it's not mounted parallel to the student rows. It's Correct. not following. Okay, that's okay. That's what that was. Let's, that was what I was wondering. Okay. Wow, that's and that works really well, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, tell you what, I'll play this part where I just kind of walk around the room uh, if if this is worthwhile. Again, I sure. Okay. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four feet off axis. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six feet off axis. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I don't know why that is having a hard time playing. Um, what I'm showing there is actually I made this front low very narrow. So the idea was not to pick up the corner of the room. So you'll see my voice disappear, but then it should reappear when I get to the sides of the room if this video will play. Eight feet off axis, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten feet off axis, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Over to 12 feet off axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 14 feet off axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Move along the side here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to the side of the microphone. Uh, low two should be picking me up now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And hopefully this sounds just like the original demo where we just were covering the room with default patterns. These are on wide, uh, rows two and one here and one, two, three, four, five. And the scenario here is if we had a classroom um, and we wanted to pick up the lectern separate from the class. Now the mic is at a 45 degree angle right now, which is different. One, two, three, four, five. So the covers that you're seeing in designer isn't exactly accurate because the microphone is not parallel to the ceiling. One, two, three, four, five. I'm on the side of the microphone now. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and then back to the lectern. Uh, I wish so, I could Scott, it sounds really like I can hear and it sounds really clear. I don't know if there's maybe just a Zoom thing. You may want to turn your computer audio up so it I know. comes across uh, a little louder. It's just not as it's just not very loud across I, Zoom. So. Yep, and I apologize for that. Um, yeah, I don't know that there's a volume in Zoom. So, anyway, um, was there again? Was there a question about? that being able to cover the, this that room, by the way, was like 25 by 30, um, which is just about in the range of what we recommend for the two foot, seven, 10, um, and even a four foot for that matter. So if, um, if you had a bigger room, then you might look to putting two, two of the mics in the ceiling. And I've got a, a demo of that as well. But does that answer the question or was there more questions about coverage? I think that, that tackles that, that question as far as covering the teacher and the, the students in the audience. Um, so I, I guess the only other, a question I have, you know, on mounting the seven tens, is it there? There's kits for hard coated ceilings and um, drop ceilings. I'm assuming, right? Yep. Yes. Uh, drop drop ceiling has has a tile bridge that you can get uh, for that. Um, there's also you know, obviously you can cable mount, pole mount. Uh, you can mount to it has a it has a desktop stand. Uh, accessory that you can set it on an actual, like just set it on a desk. Um, right now, the way we're using it, maybe I can show you the way we're using it. Though you're not hearing me through it, but I can show you real quick. Well, I took over the screen, Andy. Um, oh, yeah, you did. Really quickly, there's a desktop stand. Let's just, I'm just going to show you some pictures and you can show us. There's a desktop stand, it's an accessory. There's if you use a, a tile bridge, which is an accessory. Um, Here's where you use a flush mount, and that could be a table, wall, or ceiling. That's an accessory. We even have a mic clip. Um, there's even the idea of using, um, sorry, I could probably make this bigger. Um, the TV mount itself, uh, you can mount to a TV mount. So there's it below, um, above, um, or using the included bracket, you can just mount to the wall. Uh, there's, there's eyelids for hanging with wire. Um, so there's all sorts of options. There's even the idea you can wrap fabric around this um, to match decor. Uh, back to you, Andy. Yeah, I was going to say I can I can show you how we're how we've got it mounted here, um, and that's so. This is just a uh, it's just a mic stand uh, right right on the underneath 
just I think it's for kick drum mic and there's a there is a mic stand adapter mount if you wanted to use that uh, to be able to do it we just we're just setting it here temporarily for demo purposes so we can move it around to different locations but it can be mounted yeah like like Scott said horizontally vertically or in the ceiling Very good. Um, then we have one one more in the queue here about um, live events. So as a live event AV technician, I would like to hear from anyone who has encountered a specific problem or challenge in the virtual events they have already done. And how was it resolved? Um, I haven't done any virtual events myself yet, so I would appreciate hearing any anecdotes of what we might run into um, that I can get a little more prepared. Um, you know, I, I have a little bit of experience doing like live stream type hybrid live stream uh, mixing environment where where you're you're having to mix for a limited audience, but you're also trying to live stream that. And the biggest challenges I think come from the streaming side of it, making sure that you're able to get, you know, in, in this instance, we're doing like a post fade mix that goes to the streaming console and somebody's kind of monitoring the levels of the streaming console to get into YouTube or Vimeo or whatever they're using for the live stream. Um, most of the challenges come from making sure uh, the audio is, is translated properly over, the, over a live stream or something like that. Um, everything else is pretty standard. Uh, standard procedure as a, as a live event and you have if you know and it, and it so I guess it would surround yourself more with the mixing console than the microphone situation uh, or mixing consoles because you know you're gonna you're gonna set everything up in a similar way that you would you know that you would have over um, over like a standard live performance the other challenge comes from Again, it's stuff that ends up being not in your control. Internet connectivity, speed of internet, you know, reliability of, of the internet and making sure that those streams go over uh, properly. And a lot of that has to do with uh, having the right hardware in place to make sure that if something is wrong, it's with the service provider rather than your individual hardware. So, um, but yeah, th there are levels of complications. I I uh, I sympathize with you because <laughs> we because I've dealt with it already, and it's it's a lot of stuff that unfortunately, as an engineer, an audio engineer especially, you don't end up having a lot of control over if it's going wrong. It's like, hey, my stuff's working. I don't I mean this is this is like the internet's problem, or it's you know the video switcher or whatever is isn't pro processing the audio properly or something like that. So. Yeah, I think I, I think uh, the the other thing that I'd like to do is you know a, a full rehearsal the day before the same time same people involved just so that you know if they're if somebody's bringing something into the situation that's going to create an issue, um, you try to sniff that out during the rehearsal, um, and then hopefully the next day it's everything's the same and it, and it flows. But your ISP and, and those things are your biggest variable, as Andy was saying. Yeah, I would also Big say. Time. I would also suggest having a station set up to do an actual as close to live as possible quality check of your stream. So have someone in a separate room in a separate system with a computer, headphones, whatever they need so that there, someone is actually monitoring what you're sending out to people. It's real easy, yes. to, real easy to take for granted that whatever you're sending to whatever codec or streaming platform you're used to using, it's really easy to assume that what you're sending into it is what it's going to sound like coming out the other side of it. There's a whole secret soup recipe of processes that are going on that, that as end users, people have no control over. So you wanna make sure it's not squashing it down too much. You wanna make sure that it's not killing off all of your bass frequencies if there's live music. Things like that can be real disappointing after the fact. If you think you've done a really great job, but you didn't quality control it while it was happening and then find out afterwards though that it was a bit of a dud. So the easiest way to do that is, is through a real time second person listening to everything. And in some cases that might mean you have to have some additional processing, different equalization in, in full blown cases, you're, you're really looking at a broadcast situation where you're going to have a completely separate board for a complete mm -hmm. mix for what you're sending out to your streaming broadcast versus what is happening live in your facility. So just some food for thought there. 
So, yeah, a couple other things now that I think about it that, that I've run into as it pertains to audio uh, are sample rate disparities. As, as you, uh, we, we, we've dealt with that several times where, where what you're seeing live is, is <laughs> sounds like it's in a different key than what's getting, getting transmitted over a live stream. And, and it's because there's a, a difference in the sample rate, usually in the video switch or whatever you're using to, to stream it live. And, um, and so that, you know, make sure those things line up. The other thing is sometimes there's a delay and, and lips moving and audio coming in. You gotta make sure those delay, the delay, the audio is delayed enough to match up with, with the uh, video. And so those things, just, just have all those things in your mind as you're going through it, so. I feel like we scared them off because I'm gonna add a, a couple more things, but actually think of it this oh, yeah. way. We're giving you the whole, hopefully we've covered almost the whole scope of everything that can go wrong. Um, uh, I'll start with actually my advice. We did a bunch in the spring uh, of Zoom calls and all that for sure, because um, of our new products. Um, and one thing that, you know, we only needed it here and there, but it was a total lifesaver was every person who's presenting had a backup person on a, you know, of, of course in a different room. So if that person just went down, the other person took over. They had the same presentation, they knew the same material, um, uh, et cetera. So I, I would recommend that because that's kind of the worst thing that can happen is just dead in the water show. That's, you know, um, but um, as far as uh, what he was just saying about streaming and I, I did this today. And by the way, I figured out what's wrong, why my videos were so quiet. Those videos are quiet. I've got some other videos that are louder and we'll see if we get to it. But, I see. Um, but we actually didn't test that before this call. And I wish I would have, then we would have been ready for it. But um, when you share content, uh, at least with Zoom, and I think I've seen this in others, there's sometimes there's an option to share audio. So if you weren't aware of that, know that because that audio is gonna be way better. Otherwise what'll happen is I just share my content and let's say I play that video. The sound's just like coming through my laptop speaker and into my mic. And you even might wanna say, hey guys, can you hear that? And the far end will be like, yeah, we can hear it. It'll sound like crap. Um, you know, I mean, or like Tony said too, though, if you got somebody in another room, they in, ahead of time or in your trial, they'll be like, yeah, we heard it, but it sounded bad. Oh, I forgot to share audio when I shared my, my laptop or my desktop. So um, again, there's a bunch of things, I guess the, the, the idea is to head, try it out ahead of time and you'll find out what your shortcomings are, but it can be easy actually. <laughs> um, I, I think we gave you more than an answer there, but um, yeah, this, this is the big topic right now um, in, in this new world is, is the, the remote uh, you know, participation. And so um, do we have any more questions along those lines? Yeah, hopefully that answered your question about live events. Um, if not, please chime back in. Uh, we have another question here. Uh, is there a roadmap to add de-reverberation to the built-in Intellimix DSP and Shore products to help with more ambient spaces? Hmm. And we got to um, trademark that 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 term de reverberation. I uh, like that. It's been used. I like that. It's been used. Is it being I, used? I, that's, this is where again I wish our, our mics were open. I, I, where where have you heard that term? I know that Cisco uses that term, and it actually is a. Uh, oh, we're being recorded, right? I don't. I, I feel like I've heard this from Cisco. It is a kind of a non-functional feature in the Cisco. You see it, but it actually doesn't really do anything. But I feel like there's been another product that uses it. Um, Microtope has a couple of plugins for audio editing software that claims. oh i see where this is coming from uh this person says adesia from yamaha claims to have it so so in in the uh intellimix dsp um there is a feature right now called i would call it noise reduction um now what that's meant to do is eliminate as much of the background noise as possible um de-reverberation i that, that's I've always been interested by processing that can eliminate physics. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I guess it is possible, right? Uh, and, 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 and the Intellimix room uh, DSP can, can reduce a lot of the background noise, which in, in a lot of cases can be the reverberation. Um, so there is, it is already there if, you, if I mean, to a degree, uh, it's, not, it's not called D reverberation, it's called, you know, it's called I think, noise reduction. I think they actually, they're talking about something even beyond uh, noise even reduction. Even beyond noise reduction. And, and all I yeah. can say, 
you know, all I can say is that we, we are aware of that and we are working on it. Um, that's a great idea. Yeah. Cause that is helpful. We are, we're in spaces that aren't so good sounding or yeah. large. Yep. I have a, I have a take on that and it, it goes back to the physics of, you know, of acoustics to begin with, you know, um, it's nice if you can reverb or if you can artificially remove reverberation, but it does nothing to improve the quality of speech and experience that people who are inside of that room are having. You know, if, if the room has a four second reverb tail and you can't have two people have a conversation comfortably in it for a duration of an hour, then you're not really making the experience better. I would always say, try to make the acoustics better in the room because you're improving the experience in that room even when you're not doing conferencing, even when the electronics are turned off and you're just sitting in the room interacting with right. other coworkers. So it's, I, I, I'm gonna be cautious about saying that I think that's a good idea because we don't wanna give people the impression that we're gonna improve the acoustics in the room. If that existed to a good, um, you know, if that, if that was figured out in a good way, it would still only be an improvement for the people on the far side and it would do nothing for the folks inside of the room. Point. Um, as far as, so we're, I think we've answered all the questions and comments at the minute here. Um, I don't know, you know, should we Andy, get into, pro you... do we want to get into some products and maybe some live demo of what we have in, in this room? Is, is everybody up for uh, seeing that or hearing that. Yeah, I was going to suggest because you have the three of the MXA in your space yeah. um, that we can bounce between. So, and I can certainly, obviously, you can't do a virtual demo of a speaker, but I can show the Dante speaker. I know, I know Doble's used it several times uh, with, with uh, a good amount of success. So, and it's brand new. I, so, we can show all of this stuff, all, all of this stuff that we have in our conference room. I can walk around the room. Um, I can dance, whatever you guys want to see. I want all of it. Mostly. Okay, I figured. So, what do you want to start with? Well, let's. I what I. I'd say quickly, just quickly, kind of just give a taste of it and see if anybody wants any further follow up. Um, I I got a video that I'd like to play uh, because okay. I don't think you guys really heard the seven ten on those videos because the audio is so quiet. Um, so I've got a three minute video I'd like to play after you're done. So that's that's back to you. Oh, you thought I was going to do it now? Yeah, I thought uh, no. If you want to do that, great. Um, but uh, then I guess be be ready for. Um, um, for the follow up here, let's. Uh, so this one, this scenario, you know what? This will explain itself. Um, this to me is is what is actually what we're going to install. This is the customer experience center in Shure in Chicago, and this is actually what we're going to install. Uh, I was kind of doing a proof of concept before we did it. Um, and so check it out. You know, once again, I did not double check that I was sharing my audio. I am. Okay. Hi, this is Scott from Sure. We're testing two MXA 710 two foot versions that are mounted at the ceiling, parallel to the outside walls in a training room here at Chicago's Experience Center that is 25 feet deep and 30 feet wide, roughly. We're using default settings on both mics, though I have added uh, a low shelf filter of sorts to both, and I've turned the um, noise reduction up to high. The two mics, the Automix outputs of the mics are feeding a P300, which has all off processing turned off except its auto mixer. And so the P300 is auto-mixing the auto-mixed outputs of the two 710s. And P300 is also providing the USB interface to Zoom. Um, and the P300 also gives us certification for Zoom and for Teams. What I want to show you on the screen here is um, additional information that you can watch. Each of the 710s auto-mixer windows are being shown here. And the default settings has three lobes. I'll show you what that looks like here on the coverage map uh, for this 710 on my right. There's three lobes covering that whole half of the room. And the other one has three lobes covering that half. But each has its own auto mixer turning on the best mic for where you are in the room. 
the P300 decides which of the two 710s is the best mic for my voice for wherever I am in the room. Okay, I'm gonna walk around the room now, do a voice test. Now right now, I don't know if you've noticed, I'm in between equally these mics. I'm about eight feet from both these mics. So again, the P300 over here on the right is deciding if I lean more over to the right side here and face this mic, mic number one gets turned on. If I was to lean over here, mic number two goes on. Our auto mixer is one of the best at doing this feature of not having more than one mic activated at a time for one voice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to move over to the corner here, which with these new mic locations, this is about 12 feet from the microphone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going down along the wall to the back of the room. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And when I get back here, this is about 16 feet away from the microphone, which for the two foot version is the kind of the end of the recommended uh, sweet spot for these mics. I'm going to go towards the center of the room. One, two, three, four, five. And now I'm equally between both microphones, about 15 feet away from each of those mics. One, two, three, four, five. So it seems that mic one is picking me up now, but maybe as I move more to the right, yeah. Uh, mic number two is picking me up. I'm going to come over to the side where the camera is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, and then I'll just walk up the center aisle here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And again, when I get in the middle between these two mics now, uh, you'll see that I won't get both mics on at the same time. So it just went from that mic over to this mic as I crossed over the room. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll go up the same. Or do the same thing up this next aisle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Crossing the center there. Now it switches to the other mic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now right here, I'm directly behind this mic. Um, not sure you can see me right there. And I'm about nine feet from the MXA 710. And I'm also about nine feet from the camera, which has a built-in mic. So I'm going to switch to that mic for reference, just so you can kind of hear what this room sounds like. So I've switched now to the built-in microphone on the camera, and Zoom is doing audio processing for this microphone. And you might even heard the noise floor kind of start a little loud and then die down. That's the noise reduction that Zoom is supplying, uh, trying to correct that. When we switch back to our mic, um, because we're certified with Zoom, and we've chosen to turn original sound on, the noise reduction that Zoom is providing is turned off and you are listening to the noise reduction that Shure is providing as well as the echo canceling. It's all those processing is being done on the Shure mics themselves. All right, so I'll go back to the center of the room. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do my mic there? All right. Does that pose any questions or is that sort of self-explanatory? No, I, I, I think um, what, I, what I noticed was especially that when you turned original sound on there, um, there was a big difference. Well, when you... well, more than that, I was switching between the camera mic of the webcam that was filmed, yeah. which was using Zoom's processing. And then right. when into ours, right, you, um, that's another thing to know that's a little confusing for those of you who guys want to do Zoom calls. Zoom currently gives you the pot, gives you the um, the capability of turning off their processing and letting you do the processing. All right, they, it's confusing. They call it original sound, and you got to go make it so you can even have this option. So let us know if you guys need to know how to do that. Um, but that's cool because otherwise Zoom does some pretty serious noise reduction after you've already done noise reduction, and can it just end up sounding really processed? Um, another topic along these lines is certification with things like Zoom and Teams, where when you plug in our P300 um, with USB, it's already whitelisted. So Zoom and Teams will already see that there's someone else doing the processing and they should reduce their processing as much as possible. I can't speak for them exactly what they do, but that's the idea. Um, so that's a cool reason to 
uh, it's yet another reason to use a P300 in your chain. Even, um, even if you are using the built-in DSP on our mics, um, you still need that USB interface and you might want that certification. Sometimes you just want certification just to check that off your list. Like someone wants to know it's been vetted. All right, there you go. But there is, is all, there's is, useful is that, too. Let me finish this thought. Um, it's, it, it gets you that whitelisting and it also gives you synchronization with your mute buttons. Go ahead, Andy. Does all the MXA hardware is Teams and Zoom certified, correct? Uh, the 710, not yet, but it should be. Oh, the 710's on, yeah, on deck. 310, Three, right. 910, P300. And the anti USB is actually not, oh, you said Zoom certified? That's probably true. Team certified is just the 910, 310, and P300 currently, because the NE USB um, doesn't do uh, any audio processing. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that just doesn't qualify or something. Um, even though with an NE USB, you do get that mute sync um, between here, I can demonstrate, or I think Andy, you can demonstrate that, right? Uh, I don't, I actually don't have the P300 in here. So all right. Cannot. Well, I'm currently, here's our mute button. And I'm going to switch uh, here. I'm going to switch over to the any USB as my um, as my microphone. So actually, now you're hearing me through uh, a different mic. You're hearing me through the 710 in this room. And I did not try try this ahead of time. So let's see what happens. Yeah, you see in my name there. Um, I did nothing to make that happen. Uh, perhaps I had to hit a checkbox in the sure gear, I'm thinking I didn't. I, I, this is an anti-USB too. So, and this happens with Teams, I've verified with Teams. So you get this mute synchronization, um, but just to be clear, technically the anti-USB is not Teams certified, even though they're talking to each other. Yeah. Andy, do you wanna bounce around between the mics in your space? Yeah, let's do that. So I'll, I'll, stay, I'll stay here and I can walk around the room if anybody wants me to as well, but um, I'll kind of give you a quick overview of what we have in our room. Uh, we have a 310 here on the table. Uh, there is, I'll switch to our other camera here. Uh, as, I, as I showed before, a 710 in front of uh, our, our screen here that, that I'll, I'll demo here. And then um, there is up in our ceiling, uh, a 910. And that's what you're hearing me on now. Oh, look at that focus, good one. Uh, so. The 910 is what you're hearing me on now. Um, it's going into our room PC um, through our Intellimix software on that PC and into Zoom. And that's, that's all we've got going on as far as processing uh, in, in this room. And there's a couple of mute buttons on the table here. One's controlling the 710, one's controlling the 910. Um, and that was only so I can unmute and mute individually uh, each one. So right now, this is the 910 that you're listening to me on. Uh, where this is about a 17 foot wide by 28, 29 foot deep room, uh, 12 foot ceilings. It's a pretty good sized conference room. Uh, that is the 910. I'm gonna mute the 910 and switch to the 710. So now it's the 710 that you're listening to me on. So 910 to 710 in front of me. The 910 is probably about eight feet eight or nine feet uh, from, from my voice. The 710, I would say, is uh, six or seven feet away in front of me here. And then I'll switch to uh, the 310 here, which we just have basic setup of two different lobes pointing to either side of the table. Now this is the 310 that you're listening to me on. And it's all going into uh, the Intellimix uh, software and Telemix room software on the room PC, basic room PC running Zoom. So that's what we got. What do you think, Connor? Do I need to walk around the room? Well, I don't Shuffle. think unless anybody has any, uh, you know, I, I don't know if we need to talk a little bit about Intellimix um, as a, another piece here, but um, yeah, I think we can avoid the walking unless somebody specifically wants it. I agree. Sure, um, sure we can talk about Intellimix. I, I forgot to show this too, by the way. I'm going to show you that I'm going to mute myself in, in Zoom here, and it changes our. So I'm just clicking the mute button on my screen, and you get you get it both ways. Just wanted to spell that. Oh, cool. Yeah. I don't think I knew cool. that. That's cool. Yeah, it's not just one way. Um, yeah. So if you have a 310, if you have a 910, my, my, my 710 right here, because um, I can't show it, its LED is turning red. And again, no programming. Um, this was just 
just by using our gear. Um, Hannah, what were you thinking about this Intelmix? What, what, what to discuss? And again, every, all you guys out there, we've got about less than 10 minutes left. Any questions? What else would you like us to cover? Or any stories you want to share amongst yourselves? Um, I'd love to hear any successes. Um, but Connor, what were you thinking for Intelmix? Uh, I mean, if we just give a, a brief overview um, of the yeah. product. And if we can, you know, show that with the interface, um, just to get some more exposure. I mean, I know yeah. a lot of people we have here, you know, we may have a couple that use Intellimix, but we have a lot of other DSP users here too. So, okay. I think it's good to show. so Intellimix, Intellimix as, as a whole is the, is kind of the branded DSP software that's in all of the MXA products. It's built into the MXA products. So there's, you know, in, in the 910 and the 710 and 310, there is an Intellimix software built in. Um, each of these have, you know, individual channels that you can process uh, through an auto mix output and then run it into other DSP, or you can subvert the, the DSP that's built into the microphones and run into a P300 or into Intellimix room software that I'm getting ready to show you here that's on our computer if you want, or any other DSP that you want to use. But the Intellimix software is very easy, um, easy to use, uh, especially with Shure microphones. And I'll share my screen real quick uh, to show you uh, what Intellimix room software is. So I'll just go quick here so you can show. So Intellimix room software just runs on your in-room PC. Uh, it runs in the background as a service. So it sits here and just runs, runs as a Windows service. Uh, it turns the PC into what is essentially a Dante endpoint and sure takes care of all the Dante licensing on the back end. So you don't need Dante virtual sound card on the computer. Now you can use it with other Dante devices, but to use it with sure, you can kind of see we're using a designer to route everything in here. And this is kind of a, a general setup of what, what's kind of in our room right now with all the Dante speakers. And this is a 16 channel license of Intellimix room. And I'll kind of open it up so you can see what it looks like. Um, there we go. Um, so there's matrix, there's auto mix, there's this noise reduction I was talking about earlier. There's 16 channels of AEC built in and EQ and auto gain control. And then all these outputs here. And this functions just like a standard DSP. Uh, the processing power comes from the computer, which is more than enough. We have a pretty basic uh, Intel Nook in our in our in-room PC here and it rarely uses more than 5% of the resources of the computer. So it's got plenty of horsepower to run this DSP, which is a pretty complex DSP. And we've had quite a few, I mean, you, you think we got three different mics running all separately into it, two speakers running out of it, these two mute buttons being routed all through this. Um, and it, it rarely uses more than 5% of the resources of the computer. So. Uh, that's kind of how it works. Obviously, you know, for most of you, Doble is going to be configuring all of this for you, but uh, it's very simple, easy uh, to use, uh, and and easy to set up. And 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 the uh, through through all of the Sure devices, everything gets routed in that designer software, and it's very simple. So, Andy, we have a lot of people that use uh, Apple computers. Can this run on an Apple computer? Or is it just PC based? Right now, it's PC-based, uh, Intellimix Room DSP software. I, I believe, Scott, correct me, but I believe the, the OS, the Mac OS is in the works or in the roadmap. Correct, in the roadmap. Yeah. I don't have a timeline, Connor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. God. Just like you're shipping. <laughs> um. No more questions. And I don't, is there anything else that we wanted to try to cover? I mean, we have five minutes left and we want to be uh, sensitive to everybody's time here. So uh, yes. again, you know, if, if anybody has a question, uh, please don't hesitate to, to throw it up here real quick. Um, or if you have a, a comment you want to make, anything. Can we unmute the mics? And if anybody wants to say something, um, I don't know. However you guys want to communicate. What, what do we got? 
I mean, I could just call on people randomly and put them on the spot. That's fun too. There we go. Oh, that would be great. Anybody? Not look, not looking, not looking promising. All right, uh, then I've got. A, I've got I'll, I'll take this opportunity to make a oh. kind of a, um, a big announcement. Um, this is not new news, but it's fairly new. Um, Hold on. We, we oh. got a we got a question. All right. Um, I, I built I built that up. I mean, don't don't you guys want to know my announcement? So System on is free. We'll come back to it. Go ahead. When are the web GUIs uh, being fully retired in favor of Shore Designer? There you go. Good. That's good. a great question. Um, but actually, it even just ties into the whole idea of Flash going away. Um, and just want you to know that Shure is aware that Flash is going away. So anything that's dependent on that will be replaced with something else. Um, stay tuned. Actually, I'm going to get trained on something early November, and I'm sure we're going to make an announcement after that. As far as like MXW, for example. Um, um, but MXA products, though, the, there is no more web GUIs. You can only configure well, MXA products in designer, correct? Well, on some products, all that. So, so the 910 still has a web GUI, but eventually that will go away. But our new product, like the 710, didn't even have a web GUI right from the get-go. You need designer on your laptop. Um, and, and just, you know, Andy just kind of showed uh, his Intellimix room on a PC and he talked about designer. The idea is that designer is not meant to be on the same PC as uh Intelligence room. That's just an in-room thing that's got Zoom or Teams on it. Um, so just a heads up there that if you guys are new to designers, you want that on your laptop ahead of time. Um, it does take at least a handful of minutes, if not an hour or so, to get credentials from Sure and get it loaded. So don't wait till last minute to load it. But yeah, you will need designer and then you just need to get on the network and that gets you to all your Sure products and open up the GUI through designer. Um, so the P300 used to have a GUI. So that's one product that used to have a GUI and now it's gone with whatever the latest firmware update is. If you haven't updated the firmware, maybe you still get to it, but, um, and uh, does that cover that question? I think so. I mean, so we're, we're, you know, we're right up here against the clock. So I, I really, you know, in closing, you know, there's, there's tons of different audio companies you can work with and, and um, trust um, AV companies as well. So, um, we appreciate anybody's business. We appreciate your loyalty and your partnership. Um, and, and to shore, um, I mean, we, we've been partnering with you guys for a long time and, um, for good reason. I mean, you have a good, solid, reliable product. So, um, I think I speak for all of us when I say thanks to everybody for trusting us and p choosing to work with us. Um, and feel free to reach out if you have any questions, concerns, thoughts, anybody else have any closing remarks? Well, Again, I think it's worth noting for anyone, our system-wide management software called System On Enterprise, campus-wide software, we used to charge for it and now we don't. So let us know if you're interested in that um, as well as, yeah. So there's that. Thanks everybody. Anyone else? Yeah, thanks Thanks for uh, for everybody's uh, input today. And, and Connor, thanks for your partnership with us. And we're, we're looking forward to talking to everybody soon. Thank you. Thanks for your time, everybody. All right, everyone. Have a great day.